What is going on, everybody? Welcome to year number four, episode one of the off season as we head into year number five. If you guys have not seen the last episode, please go check that out. Ardmore finally won a national title. Yay! We finally did it. We finally got over the hump. But before we get into this episode, you are back. Hey, yeah. Woohoo! Finally made it. Excited to be here. Yeah. You didn't get to celebrate our uh, national title. Well, congratulations, I guess. <laughs> Sure. Yay! Well, before we get started, though, we do want to mention that now is the time to submit your custom recruits. Yay! So get them in. We can only take 20, and in reality, we're probably going to have to take 16 or 17 because we had some prizes over the course of the year yep. that some guys qualified for automatically. The process will be random. So if we don't pick your guy, we're sorry. We can only take 20 of them. And that's just the way that the game works. Otherwise, I would take more than 20, but we can only do 20 at a time. So if you guys are one of the lucky few, congratulations. But submit your players below. Format, you need your name, position, preference number, hometown, attributes, that kind of thing. You the guys equipment. know the drill. Yep, you know the drill by now. If you finished above Wrigley, my dog, in the bowl pickums, which by the way, he finished in last this oh, season so everybody that played is gonna be eligible to rename a freshman in the whole ncaa outside of already custom recruits outside of acu incoming freshmen as well this episode we're gonna be going over coaching carousel and all of the movement that's gonna be happening in the big 12 with coaches who's on the hot seat who's gonna be taking new jobs that's what we're gonna be doing today we are going to advance into the off season. We'll start with some records and then we will get right into those coaching changes that I know a lot of different fan bases are very excited to see. So let's go. Time for records. Emery Lowe's quarterback, the transfer, Rhett Bollinger from Little Rock, set the school passing touchdown record for the season. Last previous holder was Dee Dee Dukes. Pretty good. Uh, season for Ballinger beat the 1998 quarterback. Whoever that, that was, might be. that was uh, Wilson Rogers. Wilson Rogers. Yeah, that was he him. beat him out. Wow, that's a big record right there for Ballinger. John Hicks beats out Cade Wilson's record for passing touchdown, 34 to 30. And passing yards beat out Wilson. He did have an extra game. I would say that probably helped. Wow, wow, receiving touchdowns. Yep, Beats the 1989. It's a long time ago. Ooh, long time yeah, ago. Yeah, huge season as a freshman. Gunnar Rivers, I guess, breaks his own record. It's kind of in progress, so it's not really a record he breaking. Yeah. Did get his career passing record. Wasted the quarterback from 1980 to 83. That was Jack Sheehan, maybe. I just made that up off the top of my head. That's his name, everybody. We're coming up with lore. Every day. Yes. Every week. Jack Sheehan. Okay. It sounds like a name from 1980. It does. Jack, you could... That makes sense. Nickname Rabbit. 3,700 for John Rivers this year. Dexter Whiteside beats out the 06-08 quarterback. 63-62. to 62. So he beat him by one touchdown. That's who would have thunk it? Dexter Whiteside set a school record. And who was that in 06? That was... Blake White. Rick. Uh, okay. Good. CJ Wicks did not hold on to his record as Whiteside beats that by eight. That's pretty good there. Joey Shanka, that was his dad. his dad right there. 93 96 with 33 career sacks. Great way to go out. And Cameron Willis actually beat out Montana Flynn. That's interesting. 43 to 40, and he beat him in yards by a pretty sizable margin there 300 yards pretty impressive so winning a national title offers you some job security Tremaine Young is being offered a contract extension for well, six seasons sometimes remember Gene Chizik everybody oh that's true throwing that one out there that's true but in this sense in this sense he got some job security so Tremaine Young will end up signing this contract this is a good program a stable program doesn't matter what head coaches fly through here. 
It's just a good program. Tremaine Young obviously took over that team at 10-3 and back-to-back -back seasons, was a part of it for the whole way through. He's a guy that Ardmore wants to keep around. I would here. say that he elevated it from where Jeff Henderson was. Yes. I mean, Henderson did not get into the BCS, whereas Tremaine Young has back-to-back -back BCS appearances. So this is going to be a good for him, good for his family, good for his coaching staff. Mm -hmm. Six-year extension, and he's signing it. Oh, money. All right, guys, you know what time it is. It is coaching carousel time, and obviously the big news, Todd Orlando was fired Ouch. one season in, and he was let go by Broken Arrow. A 2-10 finish. I think that that's a legitimate decision. Yeah, you guys remember that guy from Southern Miss that took over? Southern Miss was a winning football program, had a lot of good seasons. The guy took over them, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but they went 0-12, absolutely cratered, he's gone next year. So maybe that's similar to what happened here. You don't always see a one-year firing in college, but when you go from winning the conference to 2-10, yeah. and 10, yeah, zero oh and eight in conference play. This is these are the kind of things that happen. Yeesh. So uh, Lincoln Riley was fired here. We look at Oklahoma's performance, Ooh. and I know in our dynasty they have not been doing too hot. I think that Ardmore and Uba has stolen a little bit of their thunder. I mean Uba less so, obviously, but they do have a Big Twelve championship. So I don't know inside the state of Oklahoma, really nothing going on. For the Sooners but the question is going to be where did they want to go they're looking at Winston Garrison they got Corey Deloach and Stephen Cust right here on the board so Allison Meadows also getting offered I think he's going to use this as leverage and get yet another extension right here he's got a five-year maybe window that they're looking at and he's just going to say okay I love Denver Tech Denver Tech's been very good to me I'm not going to bother looking elsewhere. Correct. Then we have Corey DeLoach being considered for Oklahoma. Stephen Cust from Nebraska wow. State has an A-plus prestige. So what people really like about Stephen Cust is that with this small-ish program in a big conference, he's been able to elevate the play of Nebraska State, getting him ranked for back-to-back right. -back seasons. And he's, he's young, and that level of success at a school like Nebraska State is going to attract a lot of attention. He's like a Matt Campbell. I always say this. I always bring it up. Iowa State, very similar type of program. But if Campbell like gets Iowa State to win in like 10 games, you can bet some powerhouse program is going to come over with some wheelbarrows full of cash to talk to him. <laughs> you so, and your cash. You're yeah, always talking about the cash. Um, but also, Corey Deloach right now looking at Oklahoma. And I think... He is going to use that as leverage, too. A seven-year extension. You know, but here's the thing. So they're offering him a seven-year extension, but, I mean, if you're Corey Deloach, you're not going to not sign that. This is a great program at ACU. And, again, I'm questioning why ACU would offer him seven years after losing, showing a little bit of a downswing. A little bit of regression, but, I mean, you can't really, you know, 10-3, and three, I mean, they lost to Armour twice. They had a chance to win a national title. That's very, very I mean, they're true. one touchdown yeah. away. Fire the guy for so, that. So, I think AC is very happy with the Loach's performance. And now we get here to Stephen Cust for two job offers, that's, potentially. That's the interesting thing right here. So, Oklahoma is... Look at all the Big 12 teams they're contacting. What? No! Wow. They're... No! How dare you take our guy, they're, Winston they're... Garrison? What are you doing, man? Now, this is interesting because Oklahoma, this is not what they want to do. I mean, they're basically admitting that Ardmore is a better football program than they are right now, which I guess is obvious, but you never want to actually just come out and say it. Oh, and well, this, it through your actions. This basically says it. Yeah. They're saying your coordinator is better than our coach was. Mm. So we want Garrison to give us what Ardmore has. And that's what they're admitting. And, you know, more power to them. But interesting that that happened. And oh, that now, sucks. That sucks. Yeah. 
Now the very interesting thing here is Clemson wants Stephen Cust. 99 overall. Is he going to be able... So what they like about Cust, and we've already mentioned yeah. this, is his ability to take a small-time school. And I say small-time with air quotes because they're not really that small. It's a medium-sized yeah. school with not a lot of football pedigree. But this team has football pedigree. This yeah. school has football pedigree. Imagine what he could do with the tools necessary to do that. That's what Clemson's thinking. And uh, we can't compete with Clemson. We can't compete with can't our keep him there. salary, and we can't afford it. Uh, I mean, Clemson's going to beat whatever offer that we give, and they're, they're going to make Stephen Cust one of the top ten paid coaches in college football. Right now, he is about 52nd in the nation. His, his salary is about 52nd. And we talked about it. He likes the Grand Island area. Yeah, per but, sport track data. Yeah. And this isn't going to work. It's not going to work for us. So, yeah, um, th that's going to happen. That will happen. Stephen Cust will be taking the job at Clemson. And this is devastating news to the Huge. University State program. But we knew it was coming someday. We knew it was going to be soon. And this might mark a new era for Nebraska State. It seems like it's always happening in Nebraska State though. Every time that they make a step forward, there's always a little something that happens to set them backward. That's the life of a non-powerhouse school. It's almost like they're coming, like the Prairie Dogs are coming out of their little holes. They they come out for light a little bit and then they go right back down into the, into the depths. Well, Nebraska State's gonna do something a little more out of the box. They are looking at promotion from within or maybe rating another coaching staff. They're not going to go after these head coaches because these coaches like Philip Michaels and Leroy Jackson, they know that Nebraska State is limited. Mm -hmm. So why are they going to leave? Even though the record has been better, our prestige is going up in recruiting, but they know the difficulties that lie with Nebraska State. So we are going to do something a little bit different. You guys are going to hire within. Possibly. All right, so with Broken Arrow finally finding their head coach, Tim Lester, A-minus prestige for Tim Lester. Pretty good guy to get in there, but they're going to be running the pro offense now. So this is a little bit different than what they had been experiencing before, even with Brian Street at the helm. Now they got Lamont Christian. Maybe this might help Lamont Christian a little bit. I don't know. I have no idea what Broken Arrow is doing as a program. I don't know either. I, like, I'm not a huge Tim Lester guy. I know he's been, he's been very so-so at Western Michigan. I think he was just hired because he was an alum. That's just me. That's I don't, I don't think right. he's going to make it long term. But uh, in this game, he is seeing a little bit of success at Western Michigan. And he's got to turn that around. 2-10, and ten, that's the benchmark. He's going to have a little more flexibility now that Uba is in the dumps. So expectations are now lowered. And the bar is reset. Got to keep climbing, though. And that's the other thing, too, is that when you go 2-10, you don't really have a lot of leverage as a school to try to get top-tier talent either. So you're talking about Tim Lester possibly, and even in real life, not really being a, like the guy to push a program over the top. This is just one of the guys that they, they have to settle for at this point. It's a pretty interesting sign for the University of Miami, Ohio. Yeah. They're going after defensive coordinator Morgan Scally. And this is, I don't know, it's kind of a good hire in my opinion because this defense for Denver Tech is one of the calling cards for them over the last, I don't know, three years. It's a turnover machine. Yeah, and over Kellen there. Ivey, interesting, also a Denver Tech guy. So Miami of Ohio is just going back to the well. Yeah. And then I think they're probably going to keep a lot of their staff together. A lot of the position guys were from you know, the lower rungs of that Denver Tech coaching staff that won the national title. So Ivy brought a few of those guys over. You know, the the grad assistants, they're all there at Miami. They're going to bring in Scallies, kind of knows some of the guys. They're going to keep that same system going on here. But Arizona State gets a pretty good coach in Ivy, too. Yes. And now Virginia. Okay, they want Stan Leach. And we know we've talked about Stan Leach right now and he feels like his days at Odessa are numbered like he's been 
the expectations are getting ramped up. If he fails to meet those, he's got a lot of bad chemistry in the locker room right now. He brought in Braxton. He sold his soul to get Braxton Austin Sr. in the program with all the high school connections. Now all the players prefer Braxton Austin. He's they a, think he should run the team. He's a player's coach, and Coach Leach seems to be more of the executive, and they're not really digging that yeah. right now. So, yes, Braxton Austin Sr. is starting to win over the locker room, and I think Stan Leach knows and sees the writing on the wall here. Does does If he loses this season with all that bad chem, it's going to all go back to him. So does he leave? And the answer is yes. However, he's taking over a Virginia program. Not doing too hot. They got the one bowl win, but, I mean, you look at that. Four losing seasons. They bottom out this year at 2-10. and ten. They're going to be doing a the spread offense, the Texas Tech thing. It'll be interesting to see if that works. Another key point. Cartier Thomas, a mm -hmm. custom recruit. Is he going to be able to take the next step with the Stan Leach offense? This, my friends, might be Cartier Thomas's busting out party. So with all those flurry of moves, we need a little bit of a recap. What do you say we get into that? Yeah, nothing much changes here at the top. You see, I'm just a couple of these records right now. Corey Deloach, 44-9. and nine. Only 11-7 and seven against the top 25. Although I will say most teams are going to have spotty records against the top 25 because those are all good teams. I mean, you see Denver Tech 18 and 7. It's a little bit of an anomaly. Very, very good. Philip Michaels 11 and 7. So 34 and 19 overall. You got Brock Musselman 33 and 19, 8 and 12, 2 and 2 in the bowl games. I I think he's an interesting coach right now. Bud Warner, we see 5 and 12 versus the top 25. I know some Camu fans out there thinking that that was the time. That was the moment to force Bud Warner out, but he's been the head coach since 1982. You can't just kick him out the door. He's got to leave on his own terms, and he wants one more crack at this thing. So he's been the head coach since 1982, and he's actually 74 years old, but 68 is as high as you can go. Yeah, so. you can't go any further, but yeah, Bud Warner is a tradition out there, and it's just really tough for the, the board and... The Regents to fire. A yeah, guy you like know, the, there's a there's a segment of the fans that wants to win at any cost, but like the majority of fans, 80 percent, you know, the normies out there, <laughs> they would be <laughs> the really normies. sad to see him go. They would probably riot if he was fired. So he has to be a letdown gently. He's got to go out on his own terms, though. Well, I mean, if you're wearing those white New Balance uh, dad shoes, then. I don't know. You got to keep the guy. So down the list right here, Buddy Monroe, five and fourteen. I don't know if they're building. I don't know what they're building towards. They had a great year last year though, so that was good news for Little Rock. Three and zero in the bowls. Yeah, he gets it done in the bowl games. This one was a little bit surprising. Rob Laduca will keep his job, but he is really, really on the hot seat. It says safe for now. I think his his. Seat is much hotter than that implies. His days are numbered. 3-12 and 12 against the top 25 and a negative record. Yeah. So it's 3-0 and all versus rivals. That's Southern Miss right now. But, yeah, that's it's tough. That's a tough call for Shreveport. We were talking about it in one of our Wednesday videos. You know, he's he's comes out of the NFL. He's been a coordinator. He's sort of like a Doug Marone kind of guy. Just throwing a name out there. So he brings a little bit of gravitas to the gig, but he's not really getting it done. And Shreveport, on one hand, they got to be happy with what they have, but on the other hand, they got to be thinking, Want a we can make more. a move. There's no reason why Shreveport has to be a mediocre football program. So they got to balance those two. They're going to give him one more shot, it looks like, and we'll talk about that when we look at the coordinators. Jermaine Young, obviously, looking good. Leroy Jackson, ooh. 1-4 this past season against the top 25. Obviously, he was a head coach in Colorado. It's so tough. This it's, is just his record at McAllen. It's tough to go into a new situation and, you know, have the buy-in. But, yeah, very successful first season at 9-4. and four. Yep. And then down at the bottom here, we have Tim Lester. So we had to create a new version of Tim Lester. His record's like clean. But he had a, a very good record, over 30 wins at Western. And... 
it's going to be a challenge. And Clint Langford getting promoted from within at Nebraska State. So Nebraska State did not use this opportunity to rock the boat and to look elsewhere. They thought that Clint Langford did a very good job running the offense, and they want to keep the family intact. They only lost a few position coaches with Stephen Cuss going to Clemson. So really the continuity for the staff is going to be there. And I don't think much is going to change. I think the Nebraska State program is going to keep chugging along. along. And then the big news down here at the bottom, Braxton Austin Sr. is taking over. And he has no resume as a coordinator. He was not the coordinator last year. He was the wide receivers coach and associate head coach. The only place and the passing game coordinator. The only place that you get away with something like this is Odessa State. Yeah. These types of moves. So Braxton Austin Sr., we see him here, rocking the pink. I don't know what all that's about, but he is taking over. So age, he's not 22. He is the ripe old age of 49. Braxton Austin Sr., folks, alma mater, Texas. Hmm, there's just something shady about him, man. Something shady. I don't know. I, I I mean, he's got the goods. He's got the recruiting chops. It looks like Tyrone Willingham. A little bit. Maybe not. I don't know. Looks like a mean version of Tyrone Willingham. Yeah, Tyrone Willingham had some attitude. I think he looks a little angry. There's something that there's something about those Austins out there that they they're angry about something. Well, I mean, this is like if you gave Lavar Ball the head coaching job of the the Los Angeles Lakers. Okay, that's, that's what this is going to be like, folks. I mean, you got an outspoken personality who is now in charge, and he is controlling the entire program, and it's not without controversy. I mean, there's some people in the Odessa orbit that are like, whoa, I mean, really? Really? Name, like, namely, quarterback Montana Flynn has been very outspoken about this right. because this is a guy that stuck around for his senior season when he didn't have to, and he gave the program everything he had. He supports Stan Leach. Yeah. He thought Leach was the guy who should continue to lead the program. Take the credit. But, I mean, you can't argue with Austin's recruiting ability. He's got that going for him. He has been a head coach at the high school level. He's won state championships. So, Odessa's going to throw their lot in with Braxton and the Austin clan. Yeah, I mean, but that's the thing. You can't you can't argue with his results. But it's just by the, the means of getting those results. A little shady. Jay Sims took the head coaching gig at Cal. So he's going out to Berkeley to become the head coach there and try to turn that program around. That'll be fun to see Pat on the what back. you can do there. So with Jay Sims leaving, Doug Nussmeyer is coming on over to be the offensive coordinator for ACU. That's a brand name. Interesting. You get Mike Denbrock. That's a guy I not wasn't too familiar with, but uh, he's the part of the Brian Kelly tree. Yes, and I ended up looking this, this guy up because I was also not familiar with him, but he's an offensive line-minded guy. Offensive-minded guy as well. And he ended up coaching at Notre Dame where he produced some pretty good running and rushing attacks. Plus, he works with tight ends. Plus, yes, he worked with a lot of tight ends. Tyler Eifert, Anthony Fasano, just to name a few, Kyle Rudolph. So what it seems like Ardmore is trying to do is stick to that running game, stick to a good offensive line, plus get more out of Eric Buchanan, one of our top recruits at the tight end position. So watch out for Buchanan next year with Ryan Stanfield, at like quarterback. It. Uh, no changes on that front. We promote the quarterbacks coach, Ian Hammerschmidt. He is now going to be calling plays this year for Nebraska State. I like that. I like that. Malcolm Thompson will stay. He was last year's offense coordinator. Braxton likes him. And you have to be on Braxton's good side yes. if you want to survive right now. Yes. Because he otherwise, is a tyrant. Otherwise, he is going to... Uh, he's he's gonna axe you. Yes, Braxton the usurper. No, Braxton the axe man. <laughs> Braxton will axe you. Okay, no changes there. R.J. Goodman is now officially the head coach in waiting. Media in Dodge City and nationally has pretty much figured it out that 
This will be Bud Warner's last season at Kansas A&M. RJ Goodman officially going to be the next head coach, as long as, let's say, Camu doesn't go 0-12 or something. Let's hope not, because they haven't won a game since yeah. for a long time. And who's this guy? Ryan Killian. He was a coach at Ardmore. Associate head coach. Yes. And he's going to now get that uh, little name bump like Dwight Schrute. He's now <laughs> the only associate head coach. He's now offensive coordinator. He's not the assistant to the head coach. No, offensive coordinator for the head coach. Yeah, exactly. Ryan Killian taking over. And what do you think he's going to bring to Shreveport? Because Laduca would basically was forced to do this. Yeah, well, they definitely want to... Well, Laduca's that run-first type of guy, and we know that Ardmore loves their three-headed monster monster type of running backs, and Ryan Killian is one of those thought process people. Yeah. So if this doesn't work, if this doesn't work, if they can't tap into the Ardmore special, yeah, then probably Laduca's gone. Because this is this is the guy. He's a young guy, bright minded. Tremaine Young had a lot to say about him in a, in a review. But, uh, yeah, if Ryan Killian can't get the offensive line to work properly for this yeah. Skeeter's offense and the running game to boot, um, this is pretty much Leduca's slash shot. Yeah. Ryan Killian is more of an aggressive type of guy. I mean, just look at his face here. I mean, you can see yeah. it. He's, he's more of that fire-up, rah-rah type of guy. And, uh, you know, they, they want – I mean, look at the aggressiveness there. 70 yeah. aggressiveness – they want a guy that's going to be coming into Shreveport and saying, you know what, we are the Shreve. All right, and a couple little looks here at the defensive side of the football. Bronco Mendenhall has joined the staff at Little Rock. That's an interesting fit, to say the least. It's a little weird. Yeah. Nothing changes there. Uh, let's see right now. They bring in Brian Norwood since Scally left. Now Norwood... Don't know too much about that. Nothing changing on that front. Mike Bush survives, and Shreveport makes another in-conference poach to get Benny Francis Jr., the defensive line coach <laughs> for the ACU Spartans. And this guy, again, you talked about Killian. This is a rah-rah kind of guy who's going to yeah. get in your face, pump you up, Makes you want to go out there and hit somebody. Yeah, that's. The, I mean, look at him. Could you see him on the sidelines in real life with that visor and the headphones yeah. on and taking the headphones off and just getting all pumped up and yeah. jumping up in air with his defensive players? Yeah. Like, look at this guy. He's an ACU alum, played in the early '80s. So, uh, yeah, I think um, this guy's going to be good for the Shreve. I, I like where the Shreve is headed. If only, you know, if they underperform a little bit. You don't want to see Laduca get fired because I think they got the coordinators pinned down here. I think these are the right moves at coordinator. But they got a one year leash, so they got to get it done. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope uh, this episode was pretty informative for you guys. Give you guys kind of a peek at the upcoming season and get a feel for the direction of the programs from the coach level view. And uh, this will be exciting. A lot of, lot of action. A lot of moving around. A lot of action, a lot of moving parts. And for next episode, we'll be covering a few more things, not focused on this episode. This was more kind of get your feet wet, kind of get those taste buds going a little bit on what is going to happen for this year number five. I can promise you guys this. Year number five is probably going to be just loaded with storylines, loaded with things to watch out for. It's going to be a fun one. That much I can promise you. You guys thought that year three and year four had a lot of things going on. Wait till year five because it's about to get lit. So what do you say, you guys? Leave a like if you like this thing and tune in on Wednesday. This is Saturday we're posting this. So tune in on next Wednesday for the next episode of year number four's off season heading into year number five. All right, what are we covering in that Wednesday episode, sir? Well, we are going to cover all the players that are leaving. But also check it out. We will see you guys in the next one. As I said, leave a like if you like this thing. We'll see you guys in the next one. As always, peace.